two minutes. Bear with us for a few minutes more. Yes, brother. My name is uh, Sunny Matthew. I am a manpower consultant. Name of my company is Sigma Manpower and Marketing Private Limited. Well, uh, the question uh, to Dr. Sagir Nayak is, or the debate subject what we have today is, was Christ really crucified? Asking a counter question is not the answer for the question. It's a simple logical theory. The subject of today is not whether Jesus has uh, resurrected or not. That subject when you are dealing it on the problem, the evidence for uh, resurrection which we can find out only from the Bible. And it is a belief of the Christians. And as you mentioned, you are not believing in Christ, uh, you are not believing uh, Bible is a word of God. And then you are taking the quotation from Bible and proving that, and proving that resurrection is not taking place. And then saying that is why the crucifixion is not taking place is a good logic. But when we approaching the subject, I personally believe it is not right. One another point. Uh, yeah, the one same question is a continuation, but one more point on that. Uh, now it is a historical fact. The crucifixion or death of Christ is a historical fact where the historians have written it on that. A Jewish historian called Josephus has written about, uh, a, about, the, uh, about the crucifixion of Christ. And it was not a secret. In a rally, uh, people have been tortured him and crucified it on that. Then what happened to Christ if Christ has not died? Whether he has hidden somewhere else, it has, his body has taken down from the cross and it has been laying down. There were people witnessing it on that. But how can you deny it on this? And the last continuation, because I am the last person to question Brother, it. I will yeah, answer you, question. then I ask a new question. No, no, this is you already asked, three, Brother, four questions. Already asked, I think, yeah. two, three questions. Three questions. Can I have no problem. You'll I'll give it. No, you will give it. Brother, yes, I Brother give you'll give Sir, Brother, yeah, we will, we will, uh, yeah. answer it, we will just let him answer the three questions. In fact, the management has put a limitation. Yeah. Let him answer the three questions. If time permits and the management permits, we okay. might come. One so, comment, brother, 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 question. Don't answer a comment. Brother, 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 brother this is the question answer. and answer time. Yeah. One. You are allowed to ask only a question, I not pass a comment. You can come to the IRF, call him to your place, whatever you'll agree to, do that after the program is over. I can't allow it now. Come Please. A comment. Please. Please. I cannot allow you now. Okay. Maybe have the answers to the questions already posed. The brother posed four questions. He said the topic was, was Christ really crucified? And I posed the question, was he resurrected? And then he said, because he resurrected, he was not resurrected, therefore he's not crucified. You're going in the opposite way. What I was trying to do is kill two birds with one stone. I do not have another debate whether Christ was resurrected or not. Two birds with one stone. If he did not die, he was not crucified. If he did not die, he was not resurrected. Two birds with one stone. So even if you remove the word resurrection, yet the argument remains the same. And you can have the video cassette later on when it's released. First I said, if a person doesn't die, he's not crucified. And then I went to say that for resurrection also death is required. So I'm killing two birds with one stone trying to prove that Jesus Christ, peace be one, did not die. If he did not die, he was not crucified. If he did not die, how can he be resurrected? I'm killing two birds with one stone. But I'm sticking to the topic. I'm not going away from the topic. Because both these things are important. According to Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, that and if Christ did not die and rise, our preaching is vain and your faith is vain. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. You can refer to the cassette. You ask the next question that historians have said, Jewish historian, that he has been crucified. Do you know, brother, how much of material has been written on Christ has been really crucified? Double the material is written that he was not crucified. Historical accords. You can come to Eric. <laughs> I can quote Venturi, Venturi, a German philosopher. He said, St. Paulus, I can give you how many names you can give, I'll give you double the quantity names. Of historians, not Muslims, Christians, non Muslims, I'll give the names. The fourth question If Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die, what happened to him? Was he put below the earth, etc.? I feel you didn't hear my talk and my rebuttal and my question and session. I made it very clear. In Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 157, They didn't kill him, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. Next was 
Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 150 it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive. I've said that. That he was raised up alive unto himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Jesus Christ peace be upon him unto himself. It is even mentioned Surah Imran chapter number 3 verse number 55 that he was raised up alive. And he'll be coming again in the second coming. So all your four questions have been answered. And the pastor said what I have got from his answer which he gave earlier. Every time I meet a Christian, I get a new answer. He said that certain damages cannot be repaired. He said that. It's there on video. That means, for certain sins, Jesus Christ cannot pay. <laughs> what I get to understand, what I get to understand, every time I meet a new Christian, I get a new ideology of Christianity. That for small sins, Christ has paid. Peace be upon him. For big sins, he has not paid. That's what I understand. That's what I understand. Yes, brother, you had some comment. Brother, just you can just ask your question instead of a comment because one in his five minutes there are yet two three minutes left. I will allow him to answer only in the three minutes, not to five minutes. Okay. Yes, brother. Quickly your question, quickly the answer within three minutes. Okay. Uh, now the in their argument which you have given based on the biblical quotings, and when actually the subject was the Christ has really crucified. What you have there to talk from the Quran. Quran when you are saying, if you are saying a statement and if you are repeating a statement, that's not an argument. I say there is a God and I say 20 times there is a God, that's not an argument. Argument requires subsequent support. So what support you can give from Quran for Christ has not crucified other than that of the statement. I expect a reply not to get the clap from the audience, but for a non-Muslim can understand and getting of a clap is simple, but under, making others understanding is difficult. So not to get a clap, but to, make, to me understand on that. The brother asked a very good question, that if you make a statement, it doesn't become a fact. It should be from authentic source. And I do agree. If I quote from the Quran, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. You need not agree. Why? Because according to you, the Quran is not authentic. I've got no problem. But for the Muslims, it's authentic. They say it's the word of God. For them, it is sufficient proof. If I say anything from the Bible, what happened to Christ, it may not be proof for the Muslims. But for the Christians, it will be. Do you agree the Bible to be the word of God or not? You agree? Good. He agrees. So a proof from the Bible, Jesus Christ was not crucified. So why do you require historical proof? Do you think historical proof is superior to God's word? Don't clap, don't clap, please. He doesn't want you to clap. He wants to understand. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of, uh, it's the proof should be, I mean, it's a matter of faith. That's why it was so good. That's right, I'm saying, as long as you are convinced. I'm not here to convince the non-Christians. To convince the non-Christians, I can give historical proof, we can have a new debate. If a non-Christian comes and tells me that he... Who quoted? Wrong, I mean, the quotation which you have quoted is right, but it has picked up from a wrong place which has mentioned on a wrong right. incident. Brother has led allegation, I have quoted rightly, but out of context. You give the context. No problem. It's a friendly discussion for understanding. Come to IRF, you give the context and we'll discuss it. You are most welcome. I'll come and meet you then. <laughs> Jazakallah, uh, we thank